guys on how we're gonna start. So first of all, I use two different size of flower pot. So this is actually a four inch flower pot that has like a little bit of a tallness to it. I've already painted this one because we're gonna do something a little special with this. And then I also use the six inch pots. Now, I got these pots at Michael's, but you can get them at any of your local hardware stores. I know my hardware store was out of them. That's why I actually got them at Michael's, but I will probably get them at my hardware store after. They're a little more expensive at Michael's than you at your other store. So I think this one um, was probably like $3.99, $4.99. Uh, this one was like $3.99. And then what I also do is I get the saucers that go with them and this is what actually makes the base and as i'm sitting here i'm realizing you know what i don't have the globes over here with me because i was busy dealing with all this technical difficulty so i'm gonna have you guys give me two seconds i'll be right back and do me a favor when you come on say hello i'll be right back They were pretty close. They were actually right around the corner for me. All right, so these are the globes that I get. These are sections globes, and I do get those at Michael's. I haven't found any of them that I like in any other place that are six inch. I have gotten the nine inch ones as well and put them on these, but basically that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this with it, and I actually like them like this as well. So they kind of look like a gumball machine when you're said and done, but they're a candy dish. So I'll wind up breaking this, so I'm gonna put this down because that's who I am. I break stuff while we work on other stuff. All right, so those are our flower pots. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint some first, but first, before we even paint, we're gonna do some wood you bend. If you guys have never worked with wood you bend, it's awesome. So I'm gonna show you, this is what it looks like packaged at my store, so you guys can kind of see what they look like. And this is WB32. You don't even have to use the numbers that I have here tonight. Uh, you can use whatever numbers you would like to use. I use them um, specifically these ones because I like working with them. But, all right, so when you get the woodie bend, it's kind of like, can you hear that? It's a little harder, it's stiff, and everything. Then what we do is, I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer because I am gonna try and show you guys how it goes onto my griddle. So if you guys can see that, it actually goes on the griddle. For me, that's what I do it with and it heats it up. I heat it up at 250. Now, once I heat it up, this stuff is amazing. So, what we're gonna do is, I'll show you guys how we're gonna do this first when they heat it up, and I'll show you how they bend. We're gonna use Type On Quick and Thick. I use Type On Quick and Thick because it goes clear, and it dries very, very fast. When you guys come on, please say hello. Let me know you're here. I do see more and Brenda on here. So, Type On Quick and Thick does go pretty fast. Um, so that's why I tend to use it, and we're going to use that, and we're going to start working as well with some of this wood you bed. All right, so I typically put a trim down here if I'm going to be doing extra things with it. We're also going to take one of these, which are normally hard, but as you can see, as you see how that happens, as you heat them, they bend. So it's great because they can bend right across. Hey, Brenda! So we're going to do that, but we're also going to work with some trim. So now this trim, let me see if I can kind of it's been on my griddle so it's kind of like stuck a little bit this is the trim I'm going to use on the base this seems to be the one that I use the most can you see how that just unravels and it it almost reminds me of like a fruit roll-up right now I am going to put this back on the griddle because I do want it to actually bend just a little bit more the other one we could use is this one right here. Now this one is set to bend really well. So we might just use this one only because I just want to get through this with you guys and show you how this works. All right, so the first thing I do is I go around here and I figure out how much I'm gonna need. So I bring it right to where it actually meets up right here and I just break it off because it can be broken off at that point, right? So now I have this. I am gonna put this back on the griddle for a second. And I'm gonna show you the messy way to do this, okay? I don't always do it the neatest way. I'm just gonna let you know I'm probably one of the messiest painters you've ever seen, and I'm also the messiest crafter you've ever seen. But my ending result comes out great, so that's the way I look at it. All right, I put it right on. You're gonna just do a thin layer right around this top right here. I'm gonna do a thin layer. We don't need it too heavy. 
because I just need enough to make it apply. Can you see how I did that thin layer? And I then am going to take that would you bend that we just did. I'm going to bring it right to the very top of that rim. I'm going to try and line it up right at the very top of it. Now, you'll see once I put it on, can you guys see how it overlaps a little bit here? So this is great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut a little bit off the end. And then I am going to push them right together because while it's still soft, it's really pliable and you can move them around. You can do all different things with them. And I'm going to press them on so that I have the base done. All right, guys, can you see how that's on there? Look at all that extra glue I got on there. I told you I'm a messy, messy, messy crafter and painter, but my end results always come out good. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. All right, can you guys see that? All right, so, and it's funny because if I show it to you guys in the camera, it looks uneven, but when I look at it in person, it's literally exactly where it needs to be. So that goes right across the base. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a flower accent on the front here. So these are actually, these are floral like swags that you can get on our website. Um, if they're not on there now, I know that they'll be on there tonight. This one, I'm actually gonna put a light glue right across it, and then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm actually gonna spread it onto the would you bend. And then I'm gonna place it just like, do I wanna put it that way or this way? Mm, I think I'll do it this way. We're gonna place it right on here. Actually, let's do it over here. I don't want it where that seam is. And I'm just gonna wrap it around and I'm gonna hold it on just for a few minutes to let it adhere. I press all the edges down because I wanna make sure all these edges are on there. We're gonna let that sit for just a second. All right, so while our would you bend is actually adhering, do you guys see that? Look how cute that is. While it is adhering, let's start doing some other stuff. So one of the things that you can do, you don't have to do would you bend. When you're doing the bases, you can decorate them anyways. This was already pre-painted. I used a color, it was actually a mixed color of a couple of um, Dixie Belle colors. And this was pre-painted. I believe it was Vintage Doug Egg and Savannah Mist. And I got this pretty little color here. Instead, we can put a transfer on these ones. So I am gonna actually put a transfer on this. I have a lovely little stick right here. I use my uh, strip. So if you guys ever have like leftovers of your transfers, don't throw them out because you can use them on so many different things. I'm gonna try it this way just so I can line it up and then I'll turn it as we go to put it on so you guys can kind of see stuff. So this was from Sunflower Fields, which is a Prima transfer. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start from the center and that way it goes on nice and even. I'm going to start from the center and I am going to go ahead and start putting this on. Like I said, this is Sunflower Fields. I know that um, I have been sold out on this one. However, I do have the ability to get it. Um, and have them drop ship to you. So if this is a transfer that you'd like to have, please let me know, I can get that to you still. And then let me try and, so as you, we have a rim here. I'm sorry guys, I'm turning this around just so I can get to this one spot. I know that it's hard to see what I'm doing. But I'm just putting a transfer on here. I'm rubbing it on, just like you do with your rub-ons when you do crafts. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually cut this right down the center where I already started it. And that way I can peel this off just a little bit easier. Because it's on a curve, it can sometimes give you a little trouble trying to peel it down. There we go. All right. So because I was able to split it, I can do that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. As you can see, I'm trying to get it on over here. When you guys come on, please say hello. Let me know where you are watching from. Again, my name is Cheryl and I am the owner of JJ Bean Designs. How this even came about is I started making candy dishes um, 
and I actually saw it on Pinterest. It wasn't something that I made up. I wish I could take all the credit for it, but I can't. Um, I saw it on Pinterest where they were taking these flower pots and making candy dishes that almost look like gumball machines. I was like, what a great idea. And I can use this and I can do it with all the different supplies that I have. And um, I can't keep them in stock, honestly. They literally are flying off of the shelves. So, all right, so because I already did that one center, I wanted to cut it so that I could move this around. When you're working with um, transfers that actually are moving around like that, that are large and are on a curve, that's how I do it. It makes it so much easier for me to be able to put them on. I'm gonna finish up this over on this side. And this is the Sunflower Fields Transfer. Um, like I said, I know on my website they are sold out. If you just if you want one of these, I can still get them drop shipped, I believe. Um, I believe that the drop shipper still has them in stock. Um, please reach out to me, send me an email. Send me a message on Facebook. Let me know. I can get them into the system and get them drop shipped to you. This particular transfer. All right. I just love these. They go on so nice. <laughs> now, the last ones I did, I used Hocus Pocus transfers because um, I love Hocus Pocus transfers. And I tend to use more of the Hocus Pocus ones, but I, these are my scraps. So I only use my scraps on little projects like this. I don't cut up any new ones. And I honestly didn't have any more scraps left from any of my Hocus Pocus transfers. So that's why I'm using one of these ones. All right. So I'm gonna put this on. A little more scraping over here. Oh, see look, see how that's going on there? That's gonna be a great base for a candy dish. All right, and I'm burnishing it with my fingers. Now, before I do anything with this, I am gonna seal this before I actually, yeah, I gotta put the rest of this on. I am gonna um, seal it uh, because even though it's not furniture and I know everybody thinks, oh, furniture, it's still a transfer and I'd really like my transfer to stay very, very nice for me. So I'm gonna wind up sealing this uh, probably with some satin in order to get it to stay. So guys, when you come on, please say hello. Let me know that the comments are working. Um, I've seen a couple, but I haven't seen a lot. So I just want to make sure comments are working, guys, when you come on. Let me know where you're watching from. And of course, if you have any questions while I'm going, please leave my que your questions so that I can answer them for you. And like I said, I'd like to take credit for this idea, but I can't. Um, it was on Pinterest. I saw it there and fell in love with it and was like, hmm, let's try this out. I think that would be a great addition to the things that I do. Unfortunately, I'm, a, I'm an addict of new craft ideas to try. <laughs> Anything that's new and artistic in my world is super duper cool. All right, so... Hey, Denise from Manchester. All right, so this is going to be the base of one of them right here. Look how cute that is. That's going to be a sunflower base. And now when we're said and done, I'll be adding this. I'll be painting this. And I'll be putting on this knob. Whoops, this knob on the top. But let's get back to the other stuff we we're doing. And let's see some of this painting that we're going to do because... I wanted to do this part with the transfers while we were waiting for the glue to set for our would you bend that we were working on. All right, here I go. And you guys ever watch my videos? I kind of like throw them in other areas. Hey, Maura. All right, so our would you bend has actually dried. So one of the things that was brought up to me was how do you get that aged look? So what I do with the aged look is I'm going to start with a dark color. And then I'm gonna finish off with a lighter color. My dark color is gonna be Gravel Road. My dark color is Savannah Mist. I mean, my light color, I got it reversed. All right, so I'm gonna use my French tip brush. And the reason I use the French tip brush for this, you can use any brush that has a point, but I love my Dixie Belle uh, French tip brushes because it gets right into all these little crevices and stuff that I need to get into. So I'm actually gonna paint this in your direction. Whoop, actually, can you guys see where that lifted right there? 
Hi in Hampton, New Hampshire. That lifted right there because it didn't have enough glue on it and it actually um, started to unbend a little bit because of it. And so I'm gonna add a little glue. And this is the awesome part about this is you can actually take your heat gun or your blow dryer. Um, yes, you can do that with a plastic pot, Brenda. I absolutely agree. Um, I'm gonna put this in. Oh gosh, you guys, it didn't plug in. Give me two seconds. I gotta plug this back in. Came unplugged. There we go. Houston, we have liftoff. All right, so we're gonna take this. Hey, Denise. Denise loves crafting too. Denise is one of my buddies. I know she loves crafting. Her and I talk about crafting stuff all the time. Denise is an awesome woodworker too. I'm just learning the whole woodworking thing. If any of you guys uh, know me personally, you know that I got some, some wood tools for Christmas, so I'm pretty excited to learn how to use them. I want to build a farmhouse table. That's my thing. Denise, if you're listening, I want to build a farmhouse table. More than welcome to come over and help me with it. All right. So I just want to press this on a little bit and give it a chance. Hey, hey, Nancy. I see you, girl. All right. So I'm going to do a faux pas right now. I'm actually going to start painting this before that dries on the end. I'm going to try and keep it pressed down, though, just a little bit. Maybe we'll start on this side while we're waiting for that side to press, okay? So I'm going to use my French tip brush. Let me move this out of the way so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to take my French tip brush, and I've got paint right on the very end of it. I'm actually going to dab in and around all those creases. And I swirl it too. I just want to get in there. I want to get that coated with that dark color just where we have that would you bend because that's what's gonna give us that variation. All right, going in, kind of dabbing, smacking, dabbing, flipping around, smack, dab, flip. All right, got that. Let's get into the other side now. I'm gonna, I just added a little more paint to my brush and I am, I'm going to swirl it in because I want to get inside. Can you guys see how it needs to get inside of those little crevices? So this brush with the point gets inside of those crevices. So I am trying to hold it up to make sure I got it all. All right, I'm going to hold this closer so you guys can see that. Can you see where it got into all of those crevices? Super important. You want it in those crevices because when we use our other paint, it's going to go over that. We don't want it to not be you don't want that pot to show through we only want the paint showing through so if you see any areas that you may have missed just like i just did you know because everybody does all right and now we're going to do the same thing with this trim on the bottom i'm just going to go like this i tend to go down right here at the top so that it goes into the cre crease of where it meets up can you guys see how i'm doing that i'm going right into there And we're gonna go back in. I'm getting a little quiet over here because I'm painting. Sorry guys. That's what happens when I start painting. And if you guys know me, I don't stay quiet very often. So maybe I should paint more often, right? <laughs> All right. So we've got our first base coat on, and then I'm gonna actually brush right around this. And the reason being is, is I don't want any pulled paint because I want this to be able to dry fairly quickly. And so I wanna make sure that I don't have any that's pulled in any areas. Oh, and I found a spot in this. Um, so I'm just gonna go across it. Can you guys see how I did that? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm actually those pieces that I threw on the ground. I'm gonna put the brush on that because I don't want it to um, get all yucky on me. Yucky is a good term, by the way. Yucky is a true artist term, in case you're wondering. Everybody should use the word term uh, um, yucky. All right, so now I'm gonna try and use my heat gun on low setting because I wanna try and dry this so that I can go ahead and do the Savannah Mist on the top. All right, so I'm gonna ask questions, guys. So. Has, who here has seen the candy dishes that I already did and saw pictures of them or saw them in person? Because I know there's some people on here that have seen them in person. Who here has seen the dishes already? And if you have, 
let me know which color was your favorite and then I'm gonna tell you guys after which ones I just I can't stop getting calls about because they just want more and more and more so let me know what was your favorite color of the ones that I did already and how's this if you haven't seen my dishes yet do me a favor, let me know what is the colors that you'd like to see them in. Like what is your favorite Dixie Pell color that you think would look really nice on a candy dish? I gotta tell you, I've been kind of flirting around with the idea of doing some in reds. Like a barn red with like a rustic, like silver and golds with it, I was thinking. I haven't decided yet. All right. Trying to get these up here. When you guys come on, if you're just coming on, we're doing candy dishes with flower pots. The flower pots you can get at any of your local retail, um, your local like hardware store, or Michaels. Hobby Lobby has them. These are actually from um, Michaels because my local um, Home Depot and Lowe's were out of them. This is a six inch right here. Um, I actually use the four inches as well. We already did a transfer on this four inch. Hey, D. D. likes the robin's egg color. So that is vintage duck egg that I use um, on that one. And that actually is the most popular color that I have right now. I can't, I can't stop making them. Everybody wants them. And Nancy said kazoo for the spring. Nancy, that's actually a really cool color to try. We may have to try the kazoo soon too. All right, let me close up my gravel road. And if you guys can see, my gravel road, my, my jar is like as I say, for clumped. It's for clumped. It needs to be, I need, I need a better jar. All right, so then we're gonna take our Savannah Mist. I'm actually gonna shake it up a little bit. You always should shake your paints before you use them, guys, because they do settle. There is some settling in your paints. So shake them, stir them, I shake them. This one has been open, so I wanted to. You don't need any special brush for this. Um, I actually have one of my Chalk Pro brushes. Oh, so this is one of my paints that I use as a pour. So let me pull the top off of this. Give me two seconds, guys. This is one of my paints that I usually pour into a container. So as you can see, it's cut to go into a container, but I didn't bring a container over here, so now i got to pull the lid off. Hold on. There we go. Look at that. And you know why I wear an apron all the time? Because I do this. I go... That's why I wear an apron, because I'll forget I don't have an apron on, and I wipe it on my clothes. So I don't have any normal clothes, because they're all painted on, all painted on. All right, so I'm gonna dip this right into that Savannah Mist, all right? What I do is I tend to do as much around here as possible. I do hold it, take the brush to push it. If you guys can see that, I take the brush to push it to go on that edge. I let the brush make the edge for me. Did you guys see how I did that? Let's see if I can get this closer for you guys to see this. All right, when I paint, I take the brush and I push the brush down and let the brush make the edge for me. Do you guys see how I do that? That way it goes right to the edge. I don't have to worry about typing off stuff that I don't want color on. This is gonna be really pretty actually. Look at that. That's such a pretty color, Savannah Mist. I haven't used this color, I think, since I did the breast cancer awareness dresser. Denise will remember that. She did it with me. I don't know if I've actually used it on that since then, except for like highlighting on stuff. This is such a pretty color. I might have to do something with this. You always forget. I'm, um, I'm sorry that I'm painting away from you guys right now, but I just want to make sure that I get into where I need to get into. All right, so once I get that, now I'm going to take my brush and I am going to just do this. I'm going to get as close to that flower as possible without actually getting onto it. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this edge. Sorry guys, if my hair is in the way, my big old head. Get as close as possible. And what's happening is as I'm painting, it's all drying on my brush. So now I have this like kind of a dry area. So if you didn't, you would take a paper towel and you would actually dab your stuff. And of course, I didn't bring paper towel over here. I'll tell you what, the technical difficulty at the beginning always throws me off. All right, so now I'm gonna get in over here real quick. I'm gonna take this and I am just gonna dry brush it right across there. Do you guys see how I do that? 
I just dry brush it and it brings it all out. Look how pretty that looks, right? Now don't worry about getting too far into, as you can see, there's parts going into it that are still gray, but that's okay, because that's what we have these handy dandy craft brushes for, okay? Those are actually gonna go right onto that. I'm not gonna do the top yet because I like to stick my finger in this little hole thing to hold it, um, but we are gonna go ahead and dry brush this down here as well. See that? I'm gonna dry brush it. Dry brushing that. And then I'm actually gonna flip this just a little bit because I wanna do this upper lip here. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna do it just like I did it before. I'm gonna go right to the edge, right to the edge over here. So I'm hoping that eventually this COVID thing stops so that we can actually do like a little, I'd love to teach this in person to people and do all different types of designs like we used to do. Unfortunately, COVID has disrupted lives and destroyed lives, unfortunately, and done so much. Let's pray one day for health and happiness on everybody, right? Hey, Becky, how are you? All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Yeah, so I wasn't smart by the way I did that. All right, so I flip it over. That is what it looks like here. And now I'm actually going to paint this top right here, just like this. You don't have to be really, really um, finicky with this either because it is Dixie Belle paints. And if you've used Dixie Belle paints in the past, you know that they are super, super forgiving. You can do so much with them. All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try and slide this out of the way because what I need to do is we're gonna paint this top that's gonna go on it next so that you guys can see how the top goes. You're literally just gonna pull this off, which let's, let's hope that it comes off the right way this time because every once in a while, that's why I have my water bottle over here. Every once in a while it doesn't and then I have to kind of scrape it. And my water bottle and my scraper right here. And of course it's not gonna. All right, so I'm gonna scrape that off. I have a, a little scraper that I use. You can also wet them and it typically wets the, um, the glue on here. You can use Goo Gone. Um, I'm used to having to take labels off of stuff when I used to teach glass or painting. I used to have to take the labels off of everything. So I'm used to it. All right, so we're getting there. Wow, this one's a stubborn one. Stubborn, stubborn. Could have been one of my kids. <laughs> if any of them watching right now, they're probably like, what? All right, so I uh, got that label off. So now we're gonna paint this. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna do this part first because then I won't be able to hold it in order to do the top that I need to do. We're gonna paint this. And I'm gonna see this is why we had to do the wood you bet the I'm um, sorry the liquid wood on this table because I paint on it and then I get paint all over it and then I'm gonna have to do some more liquid wood on this again to give it a wood look just to show how many times you can do it if you guys haven't tried the liquid wood it's amazing I actually thought about doing it on one of these and giving like a wood look but I don't know how with all the grooves and stuff and I'm just not sure how I would accomplish that all right, so you're gonna paint the top. This top is all painted, it's great. I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna wipe my hands down again because I got it all over me again. All right, and then I'm gonna use my um, heat gun again on a low setting. You don't wanna put it on a high setting because if you put it on a high setting, you'll actually bubble up your paint. And you don't wanna bubble up your paint, you just wanna dye it a little bit. Don't put it too close to it. It's just enough pulling it away. Oh, I just realized I missed a, a huge spot over here. Um, it's, it's still warm enough when you're doing it, even at this far away, that it should actually dry it for you anyways. So, I gotta ask, where is everybody watching from? I saw some in New Hampshire. There's, I know one in Texas, and I know um, Walpole, Mass. 
And I'm curious, has anybody else ever worked with Would You Bend? Because the Would You Bend is what helps make this. It's just like the neatest little thing. And I just realized we actually forgot a Would You Bend that I'm actually going to, we're going to go back on it. Even after we painted, we can still add and I'll show you what we're going to do. All right. So we're going to let that top dry. We're going to pull this over here. And now I'm going to do the top of this because I want to put Would You Bend around that rim here because what happens is it helps rest the globe on there when you put the Would You Bend in there. When you guys come on, please say hello. I see a, a bunch of more people just jumped on. So please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I always love to hear where everybody's from. I am drying it right now with my heat gun on low. You don't want to have it too close because you don't want to burn your paint. You don't want to bubble up your paint. You're just trying to dry it. All right, so that's all dry on the top. So now what I want to do is we actually have a little bit of this one right here. This is the 32. Look how thin that is, right? And hi, New Boston. Hi, Andrea, New Boston. Andrea has a table here with me and chairs that I've been working on for her. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. And I'm going to clip this one right where it meets up. So as you guys can see, it meets up right here. I clipped it right there. And now what we're going to do is I'm actually letting it cool to that. It's actually cool to the exact size and rim. Do you guys see that? How cool is that, right? And then we will, again, because it's so thin and it's hard from putting in there. Hi in Arizona. Oh, I love it. I love it when people are in different areas. I'm curious. It's so wintry here. I'm sure in Arizona it's nice and warm. Nothing like what we're dealing with. Actually, yesterday, it was funny because we went walking yesterday um, on a trail here. There's a there's a trail. If anybody on here is from around here, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's um, in Milford, and it's the lost town of Monson. And we take my son there all the time. It's like a deserted, old deserted town. Um, and those of you guys who don't know, I have a special needs son. Um, he loves to walk, so we took him... We take him usually in the spring, but we had family that wanted to go walk it yesterday in the winter, and it was so beautiful, so nice, but we were laughing because I'm like, wow, it's so gorgeous. It's like 43 out, and then I was like, anybody else in any other part of the country, if I said, wow, it's gorgeous out, it's only, it's 43 out, they'd be like, 43? That's not gorgeous. It's cold. <laughs> All right, so I'm holding this down right here where it meets because I just want to make sure that this actually dries. I put probably a little too much glue over on this side. You don't need a lot of glue for this. You just need enough to make it adhere. All right, so this is adhering. All right, can you guys see how we did that? So what we did is we actually made a rim for the top, because we want to make sure that this bowl, when it goes on, it's going to sit on the top, and we want it to actually rest that on there. All right, so because we didn't get to paint that yet, let's start. So we'll do this one first. So here's the thing. This has already been sitting, so I'm going to take my water bottle, and I'm going to miss that, and I'm just going to go over this again. Let me open up my gravel road. And we're just going to go ahead, use the gravel road, and we're just going to do that area right there where we had that rim on there. We're going to, because we want to have that dark accent, right? We want it to all match. We don't want to, we don't want no unmatching stuff. Just want to make sure I got all of this. Sorry, guys. I know my head just got in the way. All right, so you know what we're going to do next, right? Same thing we always do. We're going to go ahead and we are going to dry that again. On low. Remember, on low, not on high. Because I want to be able to go ahead and... Oh, my glue gun is um, actually gluing my heat gun. My guns are playing with each other right now. All right, so I did notice I missed a couple spots. So I'm going to... Remember I told you guys I'm a really messy painter? It comes out nice when it's said and done, but boy, am I a messy painter. Sometimes I wonder about myself. 
I'm sure my husband does too when he has to pick up after me. <laughs> All right. So I know we got two colors out there that people like. So what are the other colors you'd like to see? So I know we've done, talked about kazoo, vintage duck egg. We've done sawmill gravy. I was actually thinking of like, um, like this one right here is actually a custom of vintage duck egg and um, Savannah mist. It's a nice color. And then I was thinking, you know, like all the different colors that you could do on them. So going into the spring, like rebel yellow with maybe like peony with the pinks and stuff going through them. And um, trying to think some other like really, really cool colors. I'd love to hear what colors you guys are thinking about. And I just saw a bunch more people jump on. So, hey, when you jump on, please say hi. Let me know where you are watching from. My name is Cheryl. I am the owner of JJB Designs. And we are making flower pot candy dishes. All right, so we got that dry. So what I'm going to do is, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually paint budding up to that again, just like we did on the bottom. And if you guys can see that, Dixie Belle paints are so forgiving and have so much coverage that, can you guys see how I'm painting right over that gravel road and you can't even tell? Nancy said pink stripe. Oh, that's actually a really good idea. Maybe pink, um, maybe the fluff and instead of like a bright pink stripe, what do you think about rosé? Kind of like um, if you guys saw that, the um, jewelry box that I did when I did all those pink stripes with the rosé, which is the metallic pink. That would look really nice. All right, so that is that, and it's done. What is our next spot? So first of all, let me get my hands there again. So I already had, um, let's work on, the first thing we're going to do is, let's let this dry a little bit. So let's work on this one. Now, one of the things that I did is I already traced in and around here. So I buy felt, I buy it by the sheet. I have it in different colors. We're gonna use the tans only because I like the tans under this. You can see where I've cut them all out. This one, I already laid it across. I um, figured out what size I was gonna need. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go ahead and, which this one actually isn't working very well. Maybe this was the one for here. Oh. Um, I don't know, maybe I cut it a little too much. I'm going to cut just around a little bit this because I don't want it to overhang at all. I want it to, so I'm just going to cut just a little bit off of it. When I traced it, I must have traced on the outer edge. So what you do is you're going to trace this inside part, and that's what you're going to use for your template to cut the foam. And now you're going to ask me, why do we need felt slash foam on the inside of there? Because we want to protect that glass dish when it goes down, right? We don't want it to go directly on the clay. If you guys ever seen glass on clay, not pretty. All right, guys, I just want you to know, for all the fanciness that I have in this place, the one thing I don't have fancy is my glue stick. It is literally like a $2.99 glue stick, and I love this stupid thing. I should probably get a more expensive one or one that, but I'm like, hey, it's only $2.99. It works well. So we're just gonna take our glue, hot glue. We're gonna glue that baby right on. Just gonna press it down. Can you guys see that? I glued it right on there. All right, then when it's said and done, we're gonna take this off of here, which probably is not gonna come off easily, so that's why I'm gonna, I'm not gonna glue all of this on. I'm gonna sit it. This will go on top like this. And then this is what goes on top of this. Now, let's put this one aside because that's not the one we're actually working on. We're working on this one. All right, guys, are you ready for this? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trace this one. All right, Andrea's, I'm loving this. Oh, thanks. So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna turn this off first just to let you guys know my would you bend is on my griddle and I can feel the heat coming off of it. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna trace inside of this. So if you feel, you can feel like a lip, I wanna go on this inside of this lip. And I'm gonna trace this. All right, I'm gonna cut that first. Now, if you're doing multiples of these, which is what I do, I'll usually cut out one 
And then I'll lean the other one up against it. I'll like use it as almost like a pattern. And then I'll just cut the rest of them, which is how that other one was cut. But then otherwise I just cut them as I need them. All right, so this one is gonna go right on here and it's gonna go right on the center. But while we're cutting, let's cut the inside of this. Now, why do we wanna felt the inside of this? I will tell you, I typically paint the inside of this first. So let's go ahead and paint that real quick. We can paint it and then, while it's drying, we can cut the felt for that. I want to paint it because I want it to be all cohesive. I want it to fit in all the same, right? Well, luckily, I have an empty one right here that we haven't started. All right, so what we're going to do with this one is this right here is the same size as this out here. So now I'm going to trace that one. I'm going to, I don't, I don't like to waste my stuff, so I bring it edge to edge. And I'm just going to come across and I'm going to trace it. So now I have my pattern, Oops. and I'm going to cut this. So it's funny because somebody else asked me, where do you get your scissors? Do you get them at like Joann's or anything like that? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I bought these at the dollar store. I'm a Dollar Tree fanatic. If I can get stuff at the Dollar Tree, I do. And I will tell you, they have the globes at the Dollar Tree, but they're really small. And unless you're making like a two inch globe, it just doesn't work for me anyways. So, all right guys, guess what we're doing again? That's right. We are going to not get hot glue all over the place, first of all. My cords are, my cords are loving each other right now. All right, let's do some, let's do some low, heat gun. So now if you don't have a heat gun, you guys can use a blow dryer to quickly dry. You don't have to use a heat gun. I use the heat gun because that's what I have closest to me. I actually keep a blow dryer for this as well. Um, if you guys have done any events with me when I teach, I bring blow dryers with me so that people can blow dry their stuff. I just have a, a heat gun. You don't need to make it close to it. It should be on low. You don't need it close up, far away. You don't want it too close. And again, because you'll bubble your paint. You don't want to bubble your paint. You just want to dry it on the inside here. All right. So, look how cute this is. It is coming out so adorable. Okay, we are dry. So now, we're gonna glue to the inside of this. We're gonna take that piece that we had actually done, which is this one, and we traced it off the other one. We wanna glue that on the inside because we want it to protect when it goes on top of the bowl. Otherwise, it slides, um, it could break the bowl. This will actually cushion as you're putting it down on the bowl. So, whoops, wrong thing. Let me get my uh, handy dandy glue sticks out. I know I'm running. I told you guys, $2.99, my favorite glue gun in the world. Don't know why. But it really is. All right. I'm just going to fill some glue into that baby. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to glue it down. Perfect. All right. So now that's glued down, right? You know what our next step is? Besides this, which we'll do last. Now we have to put a knob on here. So I refinish furniture, if you guys don't know, which I'm sure you guys all do. So I have tons of knobs. I pull, I keep all the extra knobs that I take off of furniture that I redo. So like when I know that there's a piece that I may, um, I even keep stuff that I probably never use again. I just keep it just in case of that one piece that's missing maybe a matching and the customer still wants that matching one. But I keep all the knobs. This came off of like a, a wardrobe. I don't know if you guys remember the angel wardrobe that I did with the brick on it. That's what these came off of. So, but I'm gonna use this on the top of this now. So what I do is I'm gonna use some wood glue. I'm just gonna put some wood glue. You can tell I left it open a little bit. Put some wood glue on here. I'm just gonna center it. And I'm gonna leave that right there to dry. 
while we work on putting the other stuff on. All right, so now that we have that done, we have our globe. Let's get this um, off of here. So a little bit of hint, you can use a scraper, which is what I'm gonna use, or you can actually just put water on it and take a paper towel with water and it will take all of the goo and the stuff off of glass very, very easily. I just wanna do this a little faster because I wanna finish up with doing this with you guys. All right, so as you can see, that's what it's gonna look like. So let's do our glue. So guys, with your glue, this is the important part over here. You wanna try and not be as messy when you're doing this side because this will show through your globe. So I do right on the edge of the rim because that's where the globe is gonna meet. And then I do a little bit in and around here as well. And then it looks like, did I not, I didn't glue this side down. So I'm actually gonna flip this and I'm gonna glue this side. See, told ya, messy, messy. Messy Marvin over here. All right, and then I'm gonna glue around this right here, right on this very edge. All right. Then this is important, guys. When you go to put the globe on, make sure you center it right because this globe is cold and it hits that hot glue. And I gotta tell you guys, it literally sears like immediately to it. So you're gonna hold that down. Now you have that on there. We're gonna take this. We're gonna put that on. And you guys, there's your candy dishes. How cute are those? You can do all different things to them. Matter of fact, I left something over here. Where did I put it? Right here. We sell these keyholes that are from Woody Bend. You can make the molds with any of the, you, there's all different molds that you can buy from IOD, Prima, all different ones. You can make resin cast molds to put on these. There's so many fun things you can do with them. I like the smaller ones as well because when you take the smaller ones, can you see the difference here? And put it on. Let me go grab a globe. When I go to show you the globe, the smaller one makes it even more like a gumball machine. So hold on just a second. Now when we do the smaller one, can you guys see that? It's just a little bit smaller, but it's enough that it gives it that sleekness that looks more like a gumball machine. So that's why I was thinking like the red with the blacks for a gumball machine. So guys, I'm gonna bring the camera just a little bit closer, okay? I'm gonna come around that side and bring them just so you guys can see it and uh, a little bit easier and bring it down more. What do you guys think? Look at those. Do you guys like them? Give me some hearts if you guys like them. All right, I am going to back this up just a tiny bit so I can chit chat. Guys, I'm really glad that I was able to come on and teach this to you guys tonight. I know that everyone's been asking me, how do you make them? How do you make them? Um, they've been on my Facebook. They've been on my personal Facebook. So I wanted to come on, teach you guys how to do a really fun craft. This is actually something fun you can do with your kids too. If you have some kids at home right now with everything going on, they just want stuff to do at home. You can order right online with stuff. So Michael's is having a 20% off. If you order online, it's like 20% off no matter what. And you do curbside pickup. That's what I do. I don't go into the store. So I did curbside pickup for these. I used my Dixie Belle paints. If you guys don't have Dixie Belle paints, I do sell Dixie Belle paints. Um, and all my information is in here on my page. Just click on there. Um, and just an FYI, guys, Dixie Belle Silk All-in-One is releasing on Wednesday. If you want some and you want to get it faster than I can even get it, pre-order because I can do a drop ship right from Dixie Belle. So if you really, really want some silk paint, uh, pre-order it. If you want to wait, then you can just wait till mine come in and you can come get it at the store. But anyways, I'm glad everybody joined me tonight. And if you have any questions, as always, you can email me or message me here on Facebook or email at Cheryl at JJ Bean Designs. And I look forward to come on and teaching you guys more crafty things. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. And do me a favor. If you liked my videos, follow me as well as share it with your friends. Share my video with your friends because that's how my business grows is people referring me to other people. All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And I'm actually gonna go and